of a collab. Thank you for making it to a full week on your mat. Amazing, amazing. Today's intention for practice is discipline. Woo. And so we're going to start in mountain pose, right? Really grounding our toes, sinking them into the ground. Slight bend, having a neutral pelvis, stacking our rib cage, lifting up the crown of our head, elongating our spine, and just waking our bodies up, allowing ourselves to be present today. In today's practice, hands can be by your side or thumb to sternum at heart center. And just taking some breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And then circling our hands up above our head. Uh, prayer hands and just really just elongating here. And taking some more breath. And then lifting up and back as a slight back bend. Right? And then lift up back and center. And then lift up and really open up that left side of the body by bringing that right side up and over a barrel. And holding this for three two, one, and then up again. And then now to the left, holding this for three, two, and one, back center. Then maybe just rolling that out, concaving. Lifting our hands up over our head again, and then dropping down, really hinging at the hips into our first forward fold of today's practice, bending out those knees, really waking up the hamstring, maybe deepening that hold, maybe putting them behind your calves. Opposite elbows to opposite hands and just really ragdolling it, shaking yes and no. Right? Placing your hands above your shin, at your shin, below your knee. Half lift and then back down and then we're going to get into actually down to our knees and actually want to wake up the wrist right we're going to be doing some a lot of planks and holding there so this is wake up the wrist by doing some circles opening up all your fingers having space in between and reverse right and now doing bringing your fingers pointing them towards you and then again Really waking those up. And then the other way. And then side to side with your fingers pointing towards you. Right? And then having your palms up, your front of your hands down, and just going side to side again, making sure you're being gentle because this can be a lot of pressure. And then try to ball your fingers in the fist and then release and then maybe put the thumb in first, release, try the pointer finger, the middle, then ring, and then pinky and then thumb. Ooh. Right, and then shake that out. And now you can place your hands back, stacking it over your shoulder under your shoulders. Knees hip width apart and table tops. And then actually untuck, tucking your toes and then lifting up and hovering here for three, two, and one. Pushing up and back into downward dog and pedaling that out. Right. And so we're going to get into some discipline where we're going to be holding poses or asana a bit longer than maybe what we're used to. All right, so we're going to be by lifting up the right knee and bringing the right knee to your nose. Really concaving your back as if you are in cat pose. Holding this for three, two, one, and release. Almost back again. Holding this for three, two, one, release, and then back down and pedal it out. Anytime throughout this, if you feel the need to 
Just drop down to your knees and go into child's pose. Sitting back with your knees closed, thighs together, or maybe knees further than hip width apart, just to really rest and to reset. By all means, you can always do so. All right, so now we're gonna go back into our downward dog. Same on the left side. So lifting up that left knee, bringing that to nose, concaving our back, closing in our hearts. Back up. Whew. Back down. And then down and pedal that out. Next, we're gonna just go on our toes and then really just roll into a plank. Shift forward and lower to the belly. Untuck the toes. Hands can be by your chest. And then lift up and into cobra pose if you really want that deep cobra. Holding this for three, two, one, and release. And then untucking those toes, lifting up and back into that downward dog. Right, and now lifting up that right leg again and actually putting it in between into our low lunge, right? Mm -hmm. Knee over ankle and it's really just deepening this, holding this for three, lifting up your chest. Maybe you can put your hand by your waist or on your knee if that feels comfortable for you. And continue to breathe and send breath into these areas. It may be tight or may be struggling. Place your hands back down, walk back, forward fold. Hold in this for three, two, one, back into my low lunge. And now I'm going to tuck my toes and lift that knee off into runner's pose. Maybe making sure that I'm stabilizing my back foot. And then here I'm actually going to lift up, if possible, into high lunge, right? But having our hips neutral, back leg is engaged. We're making sure we're also engaged in that front leg. Hands can be at cactus, heart center. Really holding this, having some discipline in this pose. It can be challenging. If this is too much, by all means, you can always do a low lunge or continue at runners. Holding this for three two, one, back. And then stepping that right foot down and then go back into this plank pose. Shift forward, lower, maybe chaturanga. And then up dog by having your hands and wrists underneath your shoulders, under your elbows, bottom of your feet, on the mat, really squeezing in those thighs, lifting up, breathing in. One more inhale. And then lifting your butt up and back into downward dog and walking that out. Whew. Now same for the other, lift up that left leg. Step it in, bring down that knee for this low lunge, holding it for three, two, and one. Walking back, Whew. my feet are ashy. Forward fold, holding this for three, two, and one. Walking back up into that low lunge. And then untucking those toes, lifting that back leg up, maybe scooting to help stabilize, making sure the front knee is not over too much over your toes, but not too far back either. Lifting up, high lunge, hands here. Heart center or above your head. Holding this for three, two, one. Hands back down and stepping back into that plank pose. Shift forward, lower down, on top of toes in cobra and or up dog. Holding this for three, two, and one. Lower, untuck, down. 
and play your thighs. And then I'm tucking those toes, lifting up and back into that downward dog. Right, and now lifting up that right leg again and actually putting it in between into our low lunge, right? Knee over ankle, and it's really just deepening this, holding this for three, lifting up your chest. Maybe you can put your hand by your waist or on your knee if that feels comfortable for you. And continue to breathe and send breath into these areas. It may be tight or may be struggling. Place your hands back down, walk back, forward fold. Hold in this for three, two, one. Back into my low lunge. And now I'm going to tuck my toes and lift that knee off into runner's pose. Maybe making sure that I'm stabilizing my back foot. And then here I'm actually going to lift up if possible into high lunge, right? So having our hips neutral, back leg is engaged. We're making sure we're also engaged in that front leg. Hands can be at cactus, heart center. Really holding this, having some discipline in this pose. It can be challenging. If this is too much, by all means, you can always do a low lunge or continue at runners. Holding this for three, two, one, back. And then stepping that right foot down and then go back into this plank pose. Shift forward lower, maybe chaturanga. And then up dog by having your hands and wrists underneath your shoulders, under your elbows, bottom of your feet, on the mat, really squeezing in those thighs, lifting up, breathing in. One more inhale. And then lifting your butt up and back into downward dog and walking that out. Whew. Now same for the other, lift up that left leg. Step it in, bring down that knee for this low lunge, holding it for three, two, and one. Walking back, Ooh, my feet are ashy. Forward fold, holding this for three, two, and one. Walking back up into that low lunge. And then untucking those toes, lifting that back leg up, maybe scooting to help stabilize, making sure the front knee is not over too much over your toes, but not too far back either. Lifting up high lunge, hands here. Heart center or above your head. Holding this for three, two, one. Hands back down and stepping back into that plank pose. Shift forward, lower down, on top the toes in cobra and or up dog. Holding this for three, two, and one. Lower, untuck, walk that out. All right. Look forward and walking our hands, our feet to our hands. Getting that forward fold, really trying to bring our chest to the thigh if possible, having our hands by our ankles and calves. Easy. And then circling up, hands up above our head, extended mountain pose, Urvata Asana, and then concaving and circling back down. And on the mat, step back into plank pose, shift forward, lower, up dog. Up and back, and downward dog, and walking that out. Right, so just starting to get a flow. Right, I think sometimes the discipline is to be consistent, to flow, to follow through in each move, making sure that you're engaging at all times, even if you're tired. So lifting up, 
And this time, stuff in this right leg on the outside, right? So kind of in this high livid run pose. So we're gonna bring that back knee down. And then really sink into this pose, right? Having these, these hip flexors really wide and open, maybe even pushing out more if you can to really open up those hips. And then placing your forearms down on the mat, holding this for three, two, and one. All right, ooh, ooh feel that. And then actually we're gonna just move into table tops and then shift into downward dog. Pedal that out, lift up that right left leg, step it out, and really deepen and sink into that little pose. Holding this for three, two, and one. Right, bringing that down, and then lifting up and back into downward dog, pedaling that out. Right, lifting back up that right leg and stepping in between your hands now as we're in this runner's lunge. Right, make sure that you're comfortable, you're feeling stable. Sometimes I do move. But it's just to really make myself feel grounded and balanced by having all my toes, all my feet on the mat. And now we're going to get right straight into high lunge. And then really powering off, grounding this front leg. And then stepping off of that back leg up into a one-legged Tadasana. Maybe having it here or having your bottom of your feet parallel to the mat. Now bringing that foot, that ankle to the knee, so the left ankle to the right knee in the figure four. Sitting and then starting to wrap it around so that that left toe is gonna be like on your calf or even around it if you can into an eagle pose. Holding this for three, ooh, two, and one, and releasing. Trying not to drop that foot, hold it back. Lifting, and then stepping right back into that high lunge. Ooh, right? Having that discipline to trust your body, not look back, and if you did, it's okay. Maybe for the next foot, you won't. Placing your hands back down. And then stepping back into that downward dog, pedaling that out. Ooh. Right, and now do the same on the left. So lifting up that left leg, placing it in between, right, that runner's lunge, and then up into high lunge. Maybe bring an awareness that one side may be a bit stabler than the other, right? Our body's not perfect. Our body's not symmetrical. We know we got one chest bigger than the other, right? One eyebrow a little bit more arch than the other one. But it's cool, you know, we still love ourselves. Check out Loving Sequence Day 6. Right here, we are now going to really push and lift off into one legged like Tadasana, maybe bending that knee to help. Bringing the right ankle to the left foot, knee, sitting it, and bringing that foot around the left, right toe so that you are behind that calf. Trying your best, right? To focus, maybe sit a little deeper. Bringing hands heart center and holding this for three, two, one, and unravel. And then stepping back into that low lunge and then back into that runner's pose and then back downward dog.
Now we're gonna drop to our knees. Maybe just restore after all of that. Taking some inhales and exhales. We're gonna get on our back, do some supine poses. I think our legs have done enough for today. So now, Bringing our knee to chest, really squeezing that in, by right? keeping our left leg as straight as possible, right? Having both our butts on the mat. And then here, squeezing it, trying your best to straighten your leg as much as possible, keeping it down to really stretch it out, maybe holding your calves, holding your ankle, and bring it down, or even to the bottom of your feet, the chest, right? And holding this for three. The more you bend this, it alleviates the tension. So maybe see how it feels to bend and to straighten and holding this for three. Two and one. And then with that right arm still on it, you're actually going to slowly bring it down, right? Trying your best to maybe straighten it if possible, hand to toe, still keeping this left body down. Maybe looking to your left, holding this for three. Ooh, that feels good. Two, one, and now back to center and bent and down. And doing the same for the left, bringing it close to chest. And then begin to straighten it, keeping it down as much as possible and bending as much as it feels good to your body. Holding this for three, two, one. And then actually bringing that left hand on the outer of that left foot, bringing down that right arm, and then bringing that left foot down to the left side. Straighten it as much as possible, keeping the right body down, holding this for three, two, and one. And then closing that back out, bringing legs to chest. And now having your left hand on the outer left foot and right on the outer right, and we're gonna do some happy baby, right? I think discipline is also just having, making it time for yourself to <laughs> be a baby, be a child. But knowing when to snap back, right? Knowing when to, okay, I need to go back in adult mode. I need to go back in to this routine. Or sometimes I need to break this routine, but I know I have the discipline to come back to it, right? Having discipline to make it to seven days of consistent yoga, right? And if you didn't make it consistently, then you can always just start again. And then bring that back together. Maybe doing some circles, right? So left foot to left, left hand to left knee and right hand to right knee and then doing some circles by bringing them out to opposite end and then up and then back down and then out. And then maybe doing the reverse, right? So bringing your knees up and then out and then down and then up and out and then down. And then stretching that out and maybe just wiggling it out. Hands down and now Shavasana. Really sinking with each exhale. Deepening yourself in the mat, into the earth. Or your apartment with the floor, whichever.
Inhaling, filling up the lungs and your stomach, chest, heart. Exhaling, releasing everything out. Again, inhale, chest, stomach, heart. Exhaling, releasing all of it out. Allowing your fingers to naturally curl, your toes to naturally sway out. And just allowing yourself the discipline, right? To sit and complete Shavasana. And commit, committing yourself to this practice in its entirety, that may be a lot for some people. And so just bring forth awareness to areas where you may lack discipline or maybe too disciplined and seeing where this balance in your life. Bring an awareness to how you may execute your discipline on the mat today during practice and how that may translate to your life off the mat. I know for me when I'm working on discipline, something that helps with me, actually checking off my calendar, seeing the tallies in the row really helps me to visualize. And it's like a little award for myself. And to me, it feels good keeping my word and keeping that consistency and having that discipline. I think it helps to build self-esteem, confidence, and really just trusting yourself as well. you have more time to hold this pose, I encourage you to do so. If not, just make your way of bringing energy and movement to your fingers and toes. One last big inhale, filling in your belly, your chest. And then releasing, exhaling, emptying out everything. And then safely making movements to make your way up into an easy seat. Ooh. Or whichever seat is comfortable for you. Bringing your hands to heart center. Delighting me, see delighting you. Thank you for joining me. See you next week.